Hi, it's time for another installment in the power supply series and yes, it's another revision schematic. I've got some changes. Not surprising because when you work on these projects long enough, one thing leads to another. You start thinking things and you start refining it and you get caught in that trap of, well, maybe I can reduce the cost. Oh, maybe that idea I had at the start wasn't that great or oh, I've changed my mind. I think this is more important now and well, one thing leads to another you got a whole raft of changes. So not only do I have Rev C schematic here, I'll go through it in detail and all the changes to it, but I'll talk about the system engineering aspects to it as well, as well as revealing, I guess, the big secret to what my original intention for this lab power supply is. Let's go. Now, when it comes to lab power supplies like these, what do they all have in common? Well, they're all big, they sit on your bench like this, and they have one of these, a power cord. They're tied to wherever uh, they're tied to your bench, just like a bench multimeter, for example. But I do a, a lot of designs I'm working on, working on a different part of the bench. I don't want to have to move my power supply somewhere else. I might be, it might be something that's uh, portable. I might be working on the floor or it could be working anywhere on a different bench on the other side of the lab, whatever. So I had no intention of just doing yet another bench lab power supply like this. There are a dime a dozen. You can buy them for next to nicks on eBay. They're so cheap and so readily available. So I thought I'd go for something that it was a bit more niche, was smaller and met a different requirement. Now, please excuse the crudity of the model. It's by no means finished. I haven't done the front panel. It's all just sort of hanging there. I haven't put in, put the uh, uh, the binding posts on the front. But this is the case that I originally intended to house my power supply in, and I it looks like I'm still going to do that. And what's the? There's two cool things about this. One, it's very small. Look, it's only the size of my hand. It's tiny, so it's very portable. You can take it to wherever you need the job. And what's the next big thing about it? I'm glad you asked. Well, ta-da! My original intention was to have it battery powered, lithium ion batteries. I was gonna have three 18650 lithium ion batteries inside this thing. It's a rechargeable bench power supply. Is it a world first? Oh, I doubt it, but I don't know offhand of any other uh, rechargeable, just general purpose lab power supply on the market. So I thought it'd be quite unique to actually have a little battery powered power supply like this and hence why it, people have always been asking from the first video why it's not 30 volts at 3 amps and 100 watts and all this sort of stuff. This is why I wanted it to be small, compact, battery powered for a good majority of the designs I work on these days. They're only drawing a watt or two, you know, tops. I don't need a 30 volt, 3 amp power supply. And if I do, I've already got a bunch of those sitting on my bench. I just wanted this thing small, portable, battery powered, rechargeable beautiful. So the need to have this thing battery powered from a couple of lithium ion batteries in a small case is what drove most of the design decisions from the start. I started out by thinking, right, I want a battery powered power supply. I went around, I want it small, house a couple of 18650 batteries, a small LCD, some, uh, you know, a couple of knobs and a couple of switches, and that's about it. So I went around searching for a case for that, and this one's pretty ideal, and I'll show you why in a minute, but this also leads into uh, why I've changed the design in uh, Rev C now, my third uh, variation of this design. I've actually changed uh, a few things. The look and feel is going to be very similar, but Ah, the stuff like the heatsink on the back and the accessibility of the connectors and stuff like that really uh, drove this uh, Rev C design decisions. Now, as for the case itself, it's a um, Hammond slash, well, it's actually a uh, Rytec, but I think uh, Hammond actually uh, redo these now, and it's an RM 2015M. And the good thing, a couple of good things about it that I like, A, it's pretty low cost. It's, only, it's less than $4 uh, in volume for this size. And uh, the uh, three things, actually, low cost, uh, and it has standard uh, mounting holes on the top and bottom side of the case like this, so you can mount boards 
on both the top and the bottom of it. And I thought that was really good because I chose a heatsink which is kind of low profile like that and by the time you get that second one on you've actually got some height there available to maybe put a couple of extra switches or something else along the top. And of course my original intention was actually um, to have these batteries actually uh, mounted on a second board on the top here with its own battery charger. Hence why in my previous designs I haven't included um, any battery charging circuitry on the board. I just had this uh, header connector over here which I was going to connect up to the top uh, battery board which houses those batteries. But I've uh, changed my uh, mind on that so we'll go into that um, at a later stage. So you can mount dual PCBs on there and by the way they're exactly the same uh, footprint. So um, one of the neat things is if this board mounts on here, there's my four mounting holes on there, not only can I mount it on, well let's call this the bottom of the uh, case, yeah it essentially is, um, but I can actually flip it over like this and mount it on the top upside down like so, so that the board, the main board's actually on the top and the knobs are on the top of the case. Why is that important? Well, I'm glad you asked because if you've got it down like this, it's a very compact case. So I haven't got much room at all and I was going, the LCD takes up all this space over here because it's pretty big. I wanted to be able to see the LCD from the other side of the room or, you know, from a reasonable distance. So I've got my uh, binding posts up the top here and that's a bit, that's, you know, it's not that great. These knobs are on the bottom and you've got to try and adjust the knob with your wires coming out from your binding post. Well, to solve that, you can just stick the board upside down in this case and bingo, you've now got your binding posts on the bottom of the case like this so your wires come out and your knobs and your switches are on top so they don't get in your way of your wiring. It's a pretty neat, versatile case. I really like it. And one of the things I really love about this case, in fact Hammond cases in general, is that look at the data sheet. Here it is, the RM2015M and check out the awesome interactive 3D model of the case, which you can download as well. Great if your uh, CAD package, PCB CAD package supports 3D models. You can import these and you can see if your boards fit and things fit on your front panel. And it's just, it's beautiful. I love it. And you can actually um, interact with the thing and not only rotate it around like this, which is brilliant, but you can actually select individual parts of it like this and this is uh, and you can do all sorts of other interactive stuff and this is all with inside the PDF data sheet. Brilliant! Why can't every manufacturer do that? It really just makes you want to choose their cases just for the cool data sheet. But a third thing that makes this really cool is that this is a 50 millimeter high case. It's available in a shorter version, 30 millimeters high, 50 and also 70. And here and this is what it looks like so it's actually a bigger the holes are exactly the same footprints are directly compatible like that so you can actually put it in a bigger beefier case like that I love it and then you don't have to change your PCB design if you need more room in the case for something for some custom mod or something like that you can put it in this case but um, although this case I think is a bit too big I mean it just looks a bit you know, it looks a bit tall and bulky and stuff like that. So I think my goal is to get it into this smaller size case like this and try and get the LCD and the binding posts and everything in there, plus all the connectors on the back and the Ethernet and power and other stuff on the back. So let's take a look at it. So this is my Rev B board. Uh, as you've seen this before, I've done some uh, troubleshooting on this thing and I was thinking about it and looking at the big heatsink on the back. There are a couple of things I was looking at. A, the big heatsink on the back meant I couldn't access um, Ethernet. I'd have to, if I wanted that Ethernet uh, module which I was talking about, sticking it in the middle of the board here somewhere or having it um, somewhere else in the board, maybe on the top uh, board of the case, then really there's nowhere to put it because it's fouling with one of the mounting holes there. It's not nice. I can move it over, but then there's no room for the DC input uh, charging jack. Or originally I was going to have a USB uh, charging jack and it actually 
uh, charge up from either a DC jack or a 5 volt USB as well. But I think I'll just uh, stick with the standard jack, which we'll go into. Now, so I thought, oh, you know, there's a big heatsink on the back, and it costs about four bucks or something in volume. The heatsink is not cheap. So I was looking at, you know, the price was creeping up. I was looking at maybe trying to shave some cost off, and I thought, well, Oh, gee, a couple of things led to it, okay? One was the price of the uh, heatsink and the size and the accessibility of the connectors on the back. So if I could get rid of that heatsink, then, well, I can save some cost and get room for the Ethernet uh, module there and, and other stuff on the back. So that'd be really nice. Save some cost, get some room. Beautiful. But I'd have to change it to a switch mode design, which we'll go into, but I decided, nope, I'll just keep my um, LT3080 uh, as we've got, and the other thing um, is I was going to charge it from three 18650 lithium-ion batteries, and once you go to three of these, or four even, the uh, charging solutions for those become more complex and more expensive and more difficult and things like that, so and really, it was taking up a fair bit of uh, room inside this thing. I couldn't mount them in the other uh, orientation if I wanted to. And really, with a linear power supply I was using here, you're really pissing away a lot of your capacity in your battery due to your linear uh, voltage regulator. So, you know, if you've got uh, 12 volts coming from your uh, batteries, for example, then, well, and you're only putting 3.3 volts um, out, uh, which might be a typical uh, power for a project or something like that. There's a lot of power wastage in your heatsink. Just throwing it away down the drain. Can't have that. So I decided to go to two uh, lithium-ion 18650 batteries. I could mount them in other orientations. Ditch the top board on the top. Uh, put in the battery charging circuitry onto the main board. So all I've got to do is have a connector coming off, going to the battery pack and getting rid of the heatsink by actually having a switching pre-regulator. Beautiful. And the other thing was the LCD. I was originally going to have like a ribbon cable, and there's my LCD connector there. I was actually going to have it, um, you know, a ribbon cable coming out to the front of the board. And really, you know, it's then there's no way to mount this um, on the front panel. It'd have to be glued in place or something ugly like that. So I decided, well, I'm redesigning the board anyway, so why not actually, because this is a PCB mount um, uh, LCD, it's got the uh, RGB LEDs on the side plus the pins there, it'll mount directly on a board. I might as well go back to the original intention I had before I got the ribbon cable, uh, before I sort of uh, relented and went for a ribbon cable, is to have just a vertical PCB coming out of here like this, and and that would actually hold the LCD in place just in front of the front panel. But to do that, of course, I didn't have room for it before because I had the 5 volt USB on the front. But, aha, uh -huh, if I was getting rid of this heatsink on the back, then I couldn't have this, uh, couldn't really have this 5 volt voltage regulator anymore. So I decided, ah, uh, bugger that, I'll just get rid of the 5 volt output completely, and that gives me room just behind the switches on the front panel there to actually put a vertical riser board to hold my LCD in place. So I think that's a, a more elegant design. I've dropped the 5 volts, but I think I've gained it in terms of uh, just nice um, build functionality and mounting the LCD. And if you're wondering what the deal is here with the uh, heatsink sticking out the back like this, and I've actually designed my board to poke out the back like that, it's done so that the back panel here would slide just behind. It'd have actual uh, cutouts for the two voltage regulators, and that back panel there would just slide directly out there. So it just isolates the heat from the inside and keeps it on the outside like that, while you've got the plastic rear panel that just slides into those slots over there like that. So. I'm going to replace uh, that because I'm getting rid of this. I still need some heat sinking, uh, even though we're going to have a switching pre-regulator on this thing. I'm just going to have the LT3080 directly on an aluminium, a flat aluminium back panel. Easy.